We have a guest who's joining us in the studio, the deputy leader of the minority in the National Assembly. He is the MP for Kathiani constituency. His name is the Honorable Robert Mboy. He's our guest. Good morning, Wishmiwa. Morning, Latif. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. You finally occupy the hot seat of the situation room. Oh, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't know it was hot. <laughs> oh, I'm finding it warm. <laughs> yeah, it's just warm, eh? Yeah. Ah, very good. That's how it's intended to be. Uh, we just say hot, but you know, I mean, <laughs> it is relative. There are people who can handle the heat more than others. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Kambisa. Yeah. Karibusana. Yeah, Sante. Mm. Yeah. This man called C.T. Muga has the day's proverb, and this week's proverbs are from the country of Malawi, mm. whose president is called Dr. Lazarus Chikwera. Yeah. Hey. Yes. And the vice president is called Saulos Chilima. Saulos Chilima. Yes. Mm -hmm. A deer tethered with a golden chain can escape to the forest to eat grass. A deer tethered with a golden chain can escape to the forest to eat grass. Yes. Mashmuamboy, what do you call a deer in Kikamba? Uh, no, I'm not very good. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't we don't have deers now. So, mm. <laughs> what what is that? Be what do you call yeah. Swara? Yeah, swara. Uh, mm. Whoa, I I I I uh, no. Maybe mm. maybe if you ask me about a goat. <laughs> or a cow. <laughs> of course, a goat, you, a goat are, you would uh, know. <laughs> what do you call a goat in Kikamba? Listen to this. Mbui. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Latif, I could have passed off, I would have given a name that you don't know and you would have accepted it. So. <laughs> but, name, but I know, I know there are people from Kadiani listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Karibu sana. Asante. Moshimua. As a leader of a minority in the National Assembly, you're in the leadership of parliament in this country. Okay? Yes. So you're in the leadership of an institution that is an arm of government. So you are not a small person here. You are a big person. Parliament, according to the headline today in the standard, is under siege. And let me read. Parliament resumes today to a season that will test their nerves. The executive has bullishly asserted that MPs will do as they say, while Wananchi feel the MPs can rescue them from squalor by legislating against some government wishes. Will government whim prevail? Of course, here, the whole focus is on the finance bill and the preparation of the budget for the next financial year. And the feeling is that members of parliament are just going to be told what to do by forces from outside parliament and fail in the execution of their mandate to represent the people on matters of taxation. What do you say to that? Um, Latif, I think uh, it may not be exactly what, uh, what uh, is in that headline. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the attempt by the executive to muzzle and bulldoze and uh, bully parliament. But uh, the reality is that... Uh, uh, last uh, in 2018 there was a finance bill that also was contested and that was when uh, the former president was trying to introduce an eight uh, percent vat on uh, petroleum products mm. um this finance bill is much worse than that one because not only is he doubling the the, the vat is also doing a raft of other tax measures that are completely uh, unacceptable to most most of our people mm. so so i think uh, if if when we had that finance bill in 2018, many members of uh, the National Assembly opposed it. In fact, members who are belonging to the then ruling party Jubilee, who are expected to, you know, you know, just support blindly. Mm. And and I think uh, I, I want to I want to imagine that uh, even within this period, we may have uh, quite a number of members from the Kenya Kwanzaa side that will see reason and, uh, and, and, and vote with their conscience and vote uh, for the best thing, you know, the best, uh, you know, for the, for the sake of the country, not for the sake of the executive. In fact, uh, in all that, if the, the Constitution of Kenya 2010 and Article 95 spells out the roles of a member of parliament, and one of them 
is to represent the people. Mm -hmm. And when you represent the wishes of a people, then that means that you have to do what is uh, in their best interest. And at the same time, one of the other responsibilities members of parliament have is to oversight the executive. So our only connection with the executive is to oversight them, to make sure that the money that is given to them is spent uh, prudently. So, so for any member to listen to the voice of the executive on how they will vote, in how they was you know how how um they will they will, they will uh, you know collect money more money from suffering kenyans would uh, in my opinion be totally unacceptable but of course there are those psychophants that uh, you know you never miss out a few but i want to imagine that uh, majority of members uh, would likely vote their conscience but you had the president himself he he's he's threatened members i mean it was out there I mean, if, uh, if, if, we, if we listen to his uh, tone of voice, mm. when he said he also wants to see those that are opposed to, 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 to providing jobs. And I'm, I'm wondering which member of parliament would be opposed to providing jobs. We are only opposed to, you know, increasing taxation on, the, on, on Kenyans who are already highly taxed mm. and uh, at a period when the economy is doing badly and the cost of living is almost unbearable. So I think he's mixing issues and, uh, you know, sugarcoating words so that he makes uh, members who oppose this bill look like the enemies of the people. Mm. Yeah, that's really the, the, the position. You know, all of this, uh, Mwishima, even as we, as we talk about it today, all of this from today seems to rest now on the shoulders of Parliament, of the National Assembly, and to say that the decision that will be taken moving forward, then forever we will say, doesn't matter what it is, forever we will say, well... It was Parliament that decided, and that's why we are here. Whether it is finance bill, no, and then it has to all come, you know, uh, reconstructed, or finance bill, yes, go as it is. It will all be on the shoulders of Parliament. Threats and other proclamations notwithstanding. Is Parliament cognizant of that responsibility that rests on their shoulders when it comes to something like this? It's finance bill today, it will be another bill tomorrow, mm. it will be another piece of legislation the day after that. Cognizant of the responsibility heavy that rests on its shoulders to move along things like this. I, I, think, uh, I think your comment uh, you know, says it all because... Uh, you know, when, when, when people vie for elective office and, uh, you know, spend time out there with the public, one of the things that they promise uh, people that elect them mm. is that they will make life better for them. And making life better for the people means consultation with the people to know what is good for them. Mm. And then you go and pass legislation and, or defend uh, their position. Now, um, I, I know that uh, a lot of members of National Assembly are up to the task. Mm -hmm. I, I, am, I am convinced that uh, despite the threats and all that, a lot of members will, will stand up to be counted. And, and, and you know, we, we are receiving, and I'll tell you this, it's happening already. We are receiving petitions and uh, messages from the general public. Mm -hmm. People we don't know, people not from your, necessarily your constituency. And they're telling us, look, we are watching how you will vote. We're also watching yes, we are mm -hmm. watching how you will vote. Mm -hmm. And yes, you've been told by the executive that uh, they are watching you, so are we. You know, so we will watch you, we will make sure that uh, if you vote against our wishes, then we'll find a way to deal with you. And let me tell you, the, the most uh, interesting thing is that in another four and a half years, or just after four years, we'll be do having another election. Mm. Chances are very high that most of these members want to be re-elected or maybe move on to another office, mm. but elective office. And, and, and the people that will be voting are the same people that are telling them, do not dare dare to vote in in support of a bill that is going to you know impose higher taxes on us at this current situation because you know the main issue is that we are going through a very difficult economic time there could be periods of uh, you know when, when when the economy is doing well that even a little bit of an increase in taxation may not hurt anyone or may not hurt people much but this current situation is really really nasty so so i, I want to imagine that uh, because this, this, the public is what puts you in office, that uh, members are also careful when mm. they are voting. And, and I'll tell you this, you know, if, if you vote in support of the president today, in four years' time, the president will not be able to make you be re-elected. Mm. Whether he likes you or not, the public will be the ones that make that decision. And you've seen uh, people vying for presidential office. They walk around with you and they realize oh, you are very unpopular on the ground and they will pick the next best uh, alternative and mm -hmm. work with them. Mm -hmm. So members need to know. And if you lose your election, 
the person who wins the presidential seat will not remember your phone number. They'll block you instantly. Mm. Because you'll be trying to call them around asking for a position of CAS or some other or and state you or head. Get it. And they, 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 you become a burden. Mm. So what trumps yeah. the other? Because here we are, that obviously there is the executive saying, this is what I want you to do. There is the electorate saying, this is what I want you to do. What trumps the other as opposed to then being able to legislate or represent with responsibility of conscience? I, I think I think Or are you gonna do it because okay, well, let me vote this way because if I don't I will not be elected come twenty twenty seven. Or let me vote this way because I don't want to be in the bad books of the executive. <laughs> 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 or let me actually in my position do what is right, what I am supposed to do. So it really doesn't matter what side you fall on. If you're doing the right thing, that should trump everything else. So where are people? Let me let me I I'll say two things. One, mm -hmm. I think uh the first thing is that uh, you have to vote with your conscience. Mm -hmm. Do what you think is right. What you think is uh, uh, to the best interest of the people that you're representing. Because you don't represent yourself. Mm -hmm. When I speak, I don't speak for myself. I speak for the people of Kadiani constituency. And so their opinion matters. And, and the constitution, Article 10, talks about public participation. And this is one of the very shocking things. You have seen um, members of the general public from... from you know, people have sent over a thousand memoranda to the committee on on, on finance, mm. telling them their opinion. Um, a lot of uh, organizations have actually presented themselves before the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of individuals have also gone before the committee to present their views. Over ninety percent of the presentations have been a re total rejection of the finance bill. Mm. Now, the the least that a member would do is uh, to propose an amendment so that we can tweak those things that people feel are punitive. Mm -hmm. For for anyone to stand on the floor and say I am supporting, and that's what I've had some few, very few. Uh, uh, you know, few individuals say we will pass it even without a comma. Mm. And let me tell you, interestingly, uh, the president himself, when uh, he got a bit of pressure from uh, the people who are operating the digital space, he had proposed uh, some, some is it 20% or 15% on uh, the um, digital content monetization. Yep. He, he dropped it, you know, he dropped it. It's so shocking that uh, the president can choose to drop one but his members cannot choose to drop any. Some of those members are just blindly following whatever he They're says all is okay. Saying yes to it. I mean, mm. we, we, we need to move the we need to move Parliament from being a yes man uh, house to a reasoning house. Mm. And wow. in fact, uh, you know, the the kind of uh, responsibility vested in the in the, in, 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 in in Parliament, mm. being a third arm of government, uh, the occupants of uh, parliamentary offices need to be very very careful whichever way they vote they mm. must be able to vote what they believe in mm. and and i don't think any one of them can honestly tell us that uh, this public participation that was done was uh, an exercise of pr or hot air which public, mm. which public participation? there was public participation the because finance bill the finance, the finance bill. committee the, in front of the finance committee public uh, the memoranda was sent people presented uh, organizations presented them, themselves before the committee gave their opinion individuals mm. went before the committee mm. gave their opinion that is what is public participation but then over and, and above it, that and we've gone to our villages Mishmira. talk to our people mm. that's Mishmira. also further public participation Mishmira. and that is adequate public participation i think uh, what happens is that uh, within the law it's 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 not defined what is adequate but even if you get 30 people or a hundred people and this was over a thousand memoranda i think a thousand is fairly a good number if majority of them are rejecting the proposal then, then the, my, my, my concern is, uh, does their voice matter? That is what I would ask. You know, because we don't have monopoly of intelligence just because you are elected, just because you are sitting in office, a plush office at the presidency or, or a member of parliament. You don't have, uh, you know, a monopoly of intelligence. Mm. The public also have, people have been to school. Listen to them, listen to their opinion, and, and, and take into consideration what they say. What I'm finding irritating is that we do public participation, and the public say we do not want, and then you go and say, okay, we've done adequate public participation, <laughs> but our position is, is the direct <laughs> opposite. <laughs> of not listening to the people. Yeah. Which is where now you come in as a leader of the National Assembly and a deputy minority leader. We are also hearing from the opposition sort of a blanket no to the finance bill.
your leadership of Azimio yesterday, Raila Odinga said, I have told my MPs to vote against this bill. Which is also just sounding as the way the president is saying, vote yes to this bill. Raila says, vote no to the bill. Are there areas that you agree with in this bill? Are there proposed amendments that you have that you're going to take to the floor of the House for this particular bill? Uh, Latif, let me explain to you where, what the, where the problem is eh? now uh, in, on, on the technical part of it. Mm. Um, yes, there could be some parts of the bill that are not punitive and that probably are positive. But the problem with the, with the Kenyan system and our constitution is that if you vote in support of the bill and then you propose amendments, because we can do that on third reading, mm. we can propose amendments and remove even some of those uh, proposed taxes, and then the bill goes to the president. Now, the president is, is, has some authority uh, in the constitution, I think Article 115, where he can uh, veto. He can return the, the bill back to you and say, uh, and return all those things you've removed. Mm. And then he makes it your problem to raise two thirds so that he, he, he you is, can is, overturn. Yes, yeah, so you can overturn his, his, uh, his, mm. his veto power. Mm. Now, that, that threshold is very high. You know, we tried that uh, even, even to, 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 uh, when we were dealing with the gender, uh, gender rule. And it, it's difficult to raise two thirds because there's someone in hospital, there's somebody who has to attend a function somewhere, somebody has to bury a relative, somebody is uh, out on business or, you know, you know mm. out of the country. Okay. So it's, it's not always easy to raise the two thirds. And, and so the president can easily return the bill the way it is after you've made amendments and passed it. And then, uh, and then, and then if you are unable to overturn his decision, then it passes and becomes law. So for me, um, what we had proposed is that uh, they withdraw it as it is. Mm. And then they redo it now based on what the public have said. Remove the contentious issues mm -hmm. and then now present it to us so that we can pass it. And even if we disagree on a few things and you go later and, and, and veto, yeah. we will still have a fairly good finance. At bill. least you'll have discussed it. We will have discussed but it. But have right you now, now, as a minority, presented to them an alternative bill? Have you presented an alternative and said, it, withdraw that thing of yours, here is something that it would be more palatable, it, in, that they can then form a conversation? Incidentally, relative, the biggest, uh, the, the, the biggest blunder you can attempt to do is that one to present a finance bill on behalf of government, because that's a government bill. So they wouldn't even discuss it. I mean, then they would say we are usurping their powers. So for us, what we've already done is we've indicated to them, and the public has indicated to them, the areas of contention. Sort out those five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten issues, and then now present a palatable finance bill. So when we say we are rejecting, it's because even if it has some positives, if we, if we ch remove the negatives and we pass it, those negatives will re be returned by the president himself. It has happened in the past with the former president. Mm. So we, we are a bit concerned about that. And that's why we are saying we are rejecting it in totality. Yeah. But I mean, our debate will be based on only those contentious issues uh, that of, obviously there are some totally logical uh, proposals in this finance bill. Totally logical. I mean, this is a bill that is done every year, once a year, every year. Yeah. Just immediately after the budget estimates are read. But then uh, I have never seen such a contentious one. I mean, this is, it's like uh, this uh, regime promised uh, heaven on earth and they are trying to squeeze the uh, last drop out of everyone to see if they can be able to deliver on the promise. And some of those proposals, um, I mean, they haven't even thought through up to the end. Mm. So every day you talk to them, they, they, you listen to the version of what will happen, you realize uh, they don't even have all the facts on the table. Mm. The housing bill, for example, up to now, they cannot be able to explain to you exactly how it will work. So they've told you to sign a blank check, mm. and then later on, they will come up with regulations on how this, will on how this thing will work. You don't know who will qualify, how they'll qualify, when they'll get the houses, whether they'll get the houses. I mean, it's a complete blank check. You're being told just sign so that you start giving, we start collecting money, but then later on we'll tell you who qualifies. How do you pass a bill telling us that uh, everyone contributes, but uh, there are some people that will qualify, will give them houses, they'll buy houses. Some will not qualify, will not give them houses, will return their money after some time, but you don't know who is it who will not qualify. And if some people won't qualify, tell us who won't qualify, and why should they be contributing to the fund in the first place? Mm. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's totally... It, it's got too many It's convoluted. Issues. There's something that you've said, Moshimi, and I'd like you to clarify. You're saying that it is not practical 
for the minority side of the National Assembly, for the opposition, for the government in waiting, to, pre to present its own shadow finance bill. Because that's what we are asking for, basically. You, as the other side, the alternative side of government, you have your own thoughts on how you would have presented this budget as your first budget. How would your budget have looked like? And then take it to Kenyans and let Kenyans see, actually, we like this one or we don't like this one. We actually prefer what has been presented by the government in power. Now, Latif, that is a very good proposal. If uh, Kenya was operating on the, under the parliamentary system, mm. uh, where we would have an opposition. Remember, we don't actually have an opposition in Kenya. What we have is a majority and a minority. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we don't have even shadow, shadow, shadow ministers. Because ministers, even the real ministers, don't come to the floor of the house. Uh, because they are not members of parliament. In fact, the, the presenting ministers on the floor, as we have been currently doing, is, is totally un unconstitutional. It actually goes against the constitution of the Republic of Kenya, which says that, uh, you know, CSs are not members of parliament. So, so re really, um, if, if we were operating on the parliamentary system, we would have our own uh, shadow finance uh, CS who would be able then to present an alternative, uh, an alternative budget. But right now, the system we are operating under is a presidential system, mm. which means we are minority. And all of us in the National Assembly have the same responsibility, whether you are in the minority or majority side, mm. whether you are elected on the president's side or not, our responsibilities are the same. We are supposed to oversight that uh, executive together. Mm. In fact, if anything, uh, if you, just before they brought in CSS to the House, members of parliament would ask questions and it would be chairs of committees that would receive the questions. But as chairs of committees, they would be representing members to forward the questions to the CSS. So all of us in the House, we have the same responsibility. But I think we've got uh, some hang-ups on uh, the, the, the parliamentary system uh, that we had before 2010. Mm. And I think that's why there's all this issue of people thinking that you're the leader of, uh, of government business. When you're called leader of uh, majority, majority, you think you're the leader of government business, you know, and, and, and so you think that your responsibility is to totally defend the government even when they are wrong. So that means that we lose, we lose that, uh, that authority as a house and that, uh, that freedom and independence mm. to the executive. So the executive becomes, uh, that becomes uh, one of the arms of government, then parliament becomes, um, you know, just a department within the executive. That's, that's the problem we are facing. But Latif, we, in our opinion, we have indicated what are the issues we find contentious. And we've raised those issues and uh, our, our party leader has expressed uh, himself individually on all the issues that we find contentious, which means that uh, if you get rid of those, then we really have no major problem. We would like the government to operate and do its business, mm. but we don't want them to punish Kenyans. We don't want them to hurt Kenyans during this time when the economy is doing so badly. I mean, people can hardly put food on the table. Mm. People can't afford fees for their children. People cannot even uniform. I mean, teachers charge uniform for junior cycle parents go up in arms it's it's a very very tight tight uh, you know economic period and any any small uh, charge on 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 people's money mm. is, is 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 difficult not to forget that uh, already Kenyans are already paying more in uh, for contributions for 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 savings in NSSF yeah. they've gone up from 200 to 1080 per month and employers, and they keep forgetting that employers are also Kenyans, are already paying 1080 for every employee. So when you tell them to again start paying for housing, and you tell them, and then NHIF is also going up, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a very, very difficult period. Okay. The Honorable Robert Mboy is the Member of Parliament for Kathiani Constituency. He is the Deputy Leader of the Minority in the National Assembly. He's here to tell us Azimio's strategy on the finance bill. How do they... I expect to deal with it when it comes to the floor of the house. You know, even as I listen to the intricacies of how matters are conducted in Parliament, mm. uh, this is a question that I think the three of us have talked about here at length. And so now to uh, pose it to you, Moshimiwa. Would Azimio have run contrary to the Constitution if they had presented their version of what they would consider an acceptable finance bill? Um, the, the, real, the, the answer is uh, yes, because, uh, you know, the finance bill is, uh, is one of those bills that are presented by the executive. 
Yes. Um, and since, uh, you know, Azimio is not currently the executive, then you cannot be able to present those bills on the floor. I mean, a, a bill, for example, like the division of revenue, which has, uh, you know, sharing of revenue from between national and county governments, mm -hmm. a bill like the, you know, county allocation of revenue, which has revenue across the budget for example of the of the republic of kenya all those are you know those are those are those are government uh, you know uh, executive bills so we cannot uh, be the ones to come up with the, with with those but we can we can uh, for the interest of kenyans and i think that because i've heard that uh, mentioned a bit here maybe give give proposals that show what would uh, do as an alternative to mm -hmm. what they are doing but it cannot be presented on the floor of the house but that you can is... provide alternatives now now what we shall do because we shall provide alternatives on the floor mm. is that uh, we shall uh, propose amendments you know you have uh, that liberty on third reading to propose amendments mm -hmm. uh, the clauses because we have to go through clause by clause so we will propose amendments uh, scrap what we feel should be scrapped uh, reduce what we feel can be reduced maybe you know when you're amending and i notice this uh, when 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 the president is given that uh, that right to veto and to and to because the the, the constitution says that he can he can he can uh, he can send back a bill with reservations. What I've seen the president do is that he sends back amendments. Yeah. So we can also amend and introduce some of our own proposals within within it. And then and then when we put it to to a, to a vote because every single clause will be voted for. You know. And hope that uh, Kenyans will listen to our opinion, and members will agree with us. What bill was it that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta returned? It was uh, on on. Um, I think the one issue of capping interest rates mm -hmm. and another yes, that one. Was one yes. And we discussed it here and we said the president is actually acting unconstitutionally because the president is trying to be a lawmaker. Yes, he was when the law does not allow him to legislate. Yeah. So is it not what? possible to challenge some of these things in what? court and say, you know, if you're a president, you're supposed to, you have reservations, mm -hmm. you send a memorandum with your reservations and then the parliament shall discuss and consider. Actually, 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 what uh, what we have been uh, we we have been subjected to over the years is not actually reservations, but uh, amendments. Proper amendments. Yeah, new because bills. because he comes up with uh, delete these, insert these, do you know exact amendments, and that's what is debated. And if you mm. cannot marshal the numbers to overturn it, then uh, it becomes law. And unfortunately, when when you when you read the the word reservations, it just means you should send back a memorandum saying, you know, I'm uncomfortable with what you have proposed here. Can you re address it? Yeah. And uh, you know, but then when you bring it as an amendment, then 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 already it is it is making law in uh, state house. That's what we are fearing, and that's. Um, I think you can you can challenge uh, these things in court, but uh, I mean we we've tried to challenge many things in court, and not all the time do you get justice. Mm. I, that's that's uh, that's a reality. Mm. Yes. So are we saying that um, there's this possibility, whereby the vote will go in one direction? because of this looming fear that should you not vote one way as members of parliament who are constitutionally elected to represent the people but because of what many would even call you know executive interference that it's likely it will not happen and that's the reality that we're facing right now you know you know when uh, when you listen to the to the communication from the the head of state and the deputy mm. it was actually a threat and, and 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 i think the deputy kind of put it a little bit more clearly that uh, if you vote against it then we are unli we are likely to refuse to do development projects in your constituency and and you know <laughs> that's a totally unconstitutional <laughs> and totally illegal even statement coming mm -hmm. from someone holding such an office mm -hmm. and and it's that kind of uh, it's that kind of arrogance and attitude that uh, you know intimidates uh, those light mm -hmm. you know light hearted uh, members mm -hmm. because i i i, I yes, believe yeah. even if i was from the middle of central kenya or rift valley I would oppose it and uh, I would expect development for the people because, you see, the development going to the constituency is not for me. Mm -hmm. It is for the constituents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am voting, my, I'm voting on their behalf. 
So for me to vote uh, against a bill, then these people are also still paying taxes. You cannot say that they will not get development. Mm. And I think that's what they are scared of. Maybe getting favors might be more of what they are more scared of. But you know, favors, favors mean something. Favors means that uh, the people see that you are delivering and then the people will elect you. Yeah. It, it's 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 self preservation Mushimi. it makes sense for for me for me that's how i look at it i mm. look at it like uh, the people the, the, the people that put you in office should be your bosses yeah but you know what happens in uh, you know in, in, in with some of our leaders you are elected and the people that elected you uh, they they become your subjects they are no longer your boss because now you're in office and so you do what you want and i, I think that this administration i'm i'm sorry to say this administration rode on uh, the backs of uh, those hustlers and uh, give them huge promises and now they are stepping on their backs breaking their backs and they seem not to care so i think i think somebody has to step in and and defend them who's that person and to be that will be a member of parliament that will be me to, when that bill comes up mm -hmm. and that will be members uh, of azimio and that will be members of kenya kwanza that uh, care for this country mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we you know let me say there's there's been this you know this talk uh, I've, I've on talk shows, on TV, and, 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 and in funerals, where people want to, pop, to, to make it seem like uh, Kenyans haven't been paying taxes. I've had that debate, and it's very tiring. Mm. We've been paying taxes from the, for the last 60 years from independence. We've been paying taxes. We are not saying we don't want to pay taxes. We're just saying do not increase the amount of taxation that Kenyans are paying. It's a wrong time. People are suffering. Why would you wait for me when I am? It's like even if we are fighting, we have a boxing match and I knock you down. Yeah. Mm. I cannot start kicking you when you're down there. Mm. I'll wait for you to stand up. Wait for us to stand up. When we are on our feet, then you can now maybe throw the next punch. Mm. Okay. But now Kenyans are on the ground and they're being trampled upon by this government. It's unfortunate. And, and sorry to say this, but you see, there's uh, also been a lot of division in the run-up to the elections. They told us it's uh, hustlers versus the dynasties. Mm. Immediately after the elections, we were told it's, uh, it's those that are shareholders versus non-shareholders. Now we've been told it's people with salaries versus the ones without salaries. It's unfortunate, but there are so many hustlers that have a salary. Mm. I mean, if you're earning 15000 20000 you're a hustler. Mm. Why would you be subjected to more taxation and then you're being told that you're doing very well, money must be taken from you because somebody in the village is not earning so that they can be employed. And the reality is that they cannot explain to us exactly how they will do it. Mm. Yeah. Mishmua, mm. there are crocodile tears and MPs have been accused of shedding crocodile tears collectively as a national assembly. Because we are at this point where we are discussing how to finance the government for the next financial year. Already, Parliament has okayed for the government to spend 3.6 trillion shillings in the next financial year. Already, that has passed. And we did not hear much noise from members of Parliament when they were saying the government can go ahead and spend 3.6 trillion shillings. When Parliament was looking and it receives all this information every month from the National Treasury, and you can see that the revenues that have been raised by government are not even going to hit their target for last year. The estimated uh, revenue, um, total revenue for this year is going to be about 1.8 trillion shillings. Then the government comes to parliament and says, we are going to raise 2.6 trillion shillings next year. Some of those questions that should be coming from parliament, how is that possible for you to raise that when you have not even met your target that you presented last year, are not asked so when we hear parliamentarians now talking about finance bill and you know we are representing the people and we speak for our people why didn't you speak for the people when parliament when the executive came to you and sought your authority to spend 3.6 trillion shillings you said yes when parliament came to you with a revised revenue estimate and you did not raise a question you did not even force them to cut back on spending and now you are raising an issue with what they want to raise next year Incidentally, Latif, what, the, what we did, we debated uh, the, we call it uh, the budget policy statement, not the budget estimates. Those are yet to come to the floor. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you'll be surprised, that is the first uh, contact uh, point of war. Because they are bringing the estimates. 
And those questions now will be asked when they present those estimates to the floor of the house. Because what was what was happening is a budget policy statement is there. The, 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 the aspirations. The overall. Yeah, the yeah. aspirations is what we'd like to do and all that. It's a wish list. Yes. Now the budget estimates, if you pass them, then you've already committed the country. We haven't done that yet. So that you, 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 you've put the cart before the horse. It's coming to the floor of the house. And I can tell you that there will be fireworks on that one. Because we do have questions. I mean, we say you have to cut your cloth according to your size. We, 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 we are continuously seeing, uh, you know, excessive expenditure by government. And that has happened from, from the time I've been in parliament from 2013. Every budget is always, uh, you know, they, they, it's always, it's, it so always has grand. a deficit. Mm. It's always bigger than uh, the amount of money that is available. Now, they were financing it with borrowing. This time we've, uh, we've agreed that uh, let us not go into borrowing too much. Let us reduce the borrowing because that's going to hurt us in the future. But then why can't we reduce some of these, uh, one, one, some of these expenditures? You, you have to introduce some austerity measures. This regime that is in office today have recruited 50 chief administrative uh, something, CAS, CASs, yeah. 50 of them. This, this, this is an office that was created in 2018 mm. to reward political cronies that had lost the election. Yeah. And, and, and the court you know, pronounced itself on that and they said, look, we will, we will only allow them to proceed because they had already been in office. And I think that was to last up to the end of the term. I thought that kind of monkey business would not be repeated. In fact, it's unfortunate that uh, this time it's even more than what happened. But Uhuru ran the country from 2013 to 2017. For five years, he didn't have any cabinet, those CASs. They were not there. In the second term, he used it to reward cronies. Mm. Now it has been perfected by the duo that is in office today, and they have increased the number. Yeah. And look at the people that have been put there. And all of them, almost all of them, it's either you are, you are governor and you lost election or you finished your two terms as governor. Why can't you go and do something else? People must learn to retire in this country. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you've been nominated, I don't know, a member, you've been nominated into Senate. You still feel you must continue serving in some office something somewhere. Or other. I so mean, I, when, when are we going to give commission. those Mamambogas, border borders, and the youth an opportunity to serve this country? But I also hear you saying, and you can stop me if I'm wrong, that this taxation that is being looked for you can actually mop up this money within government right now instead of this superfluous spending that we are seeing is that what you're saying i'm saying that if you can if you reduce uh, the government wastage mm. then you probably will not need to tax kenyans excessively what about if you get rid of the 50 cases mm. then already that's a saving you don't have to charge us uh, some extra money on uh, on wigs and uh, you know and, and nails for, for our ladies you know so <laughs> I so we just sure. we just need to we just need to look at uh, what are, where are the excesses, where are the excesses? and then cut the cut down on corruption. I mean, uh, Uru told us that uh, we are losing two billion on corruption a day. Yeah, and and the, the truth is, there's there's uh, you know some I think there's budgeted corruption. You know, it's put all in, in there. putting money there so that uh, because the cost of government services is you know projects is so many times more than uh, if you do the same project uh, privately. Mm. If you if you're building a classroom. If for yourself, or you go and donate a classroom in an institution and say, I want to donate and build a class myself, mm. the cost will be like half what the government will build the same class for. That's so true. there's a lot of wastage, and I think uh, maybe we need to cut down on that. It's a very, very difficult task and needs very serious people. Uh, it doesn't need uh, the you know people that uh, are sweet with their it tongue. Can't but, yeah. no, it, it can't be wishy-washy people. It cannot be wishy-washy. It has I'm to be sorry, but people. when I hear Zimio talking about wastage and government overspending, I'm like, ah, come on. <laughs> Azimio <laughs> was in power just a couple of months ago with Jubilee and uh, all these other parties supporting Jubilee's uh, tenure in office. When Jubilee introduced the chief administrative secretaries, all of you kept quiet. Jubilee, plus ODM, plus Wiper, plus other Azimio members were pushing for BBI, which was going to increase members of parliament by 70 new constituencies. So when I hear Azimio talking about government excess, I'm sorry, but I have to question, I, what moral authority do you have to lecture anybody about a bloated government? 
Now, uh, you know, I, I've, I've had this, uh, this, this conversation many times, and what surprises me is that uh, a lot of people seem to think that, uh, and let me speak for myself and my party, Wiper. Yeah. We were never in government. We have never been in government. I've been in opposition from 2013 up to now. Mm. I was deputy leader of the minority in the last regime. I was in the minority throughout. And, uh, you know, there was a handshake, yes. The handshake took place between uh, our leader, then uh, called Coalition, Raila, and Uhuru. And what was the purpose of that handshake? I think it was just to bring, tone down the political temperatures. Raila was never a cabinet secretary. Raila's people were not ministers. By the time the handshake took place, already the cabinet had been formed, and uh, all these offices had already been appointed, including those CSs. No, so, no, no, no. CS happened later. Oh, it happened later? Yeah, after handshake, yes. All I know is that uh, all those offices were mm. offices that were created for purposes of, uh, you know, for supporting Jubilee mm. in office. And, and, and we, were, were in the, were, were, we retained our position as a minority. The thing is, there was a cordial working relationship. Yeah. But, but well, Raila was not part people, of government. Some wiper people were appointed CASs. The current governor of your county, yes. Machakos, was a CAS. Oh, lucky her. She never moved to Jubilee. She was wiper <laughs> all down, all along. So wiper benefited from those things that were being done by Jubilee. Well, two wrongs don't make a right. If uh, there are mm. mistakes made in the last regime, don't make them we, again must, we must correct them in this one. <coughs> so I have a moral authority to say, yes, there were mistakes, but let's correct them. You cannot, uh, like they, they've told us, Kenya Kwanza told us, if you find yourself in a hole, don't continue digging. So stop. I'm saying we were in a hole, stop digging. Stop digging. <laughs> <laughs> and you who has the shovel today, stop digging. So <laughs> <laughs> you have the instruments of power. You with the shovel, stop digging us deeper into this uh, hole. We, we will try our best, but uh, I have stopped digging. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> what happens if um, your numbers are not sufficient to block the passage of the finance bill? It, it's going to be unfortunate because uh, from where I sit, I think um, the, the, the public has spoken. Mm. And uh, it, it will be unfortunate because, you know, uh, our workers in this country are governed by, the, the, they all belong to unions. And I am, I am of the opinion that most of these unions are probably going to ask their members to down their tools. So passage of this uh, finance bill will probably also create a bigger problem. In fact, uh, by us uh, agreeing to change a few things here and there, it might be even better for the government to continue running its, uh, its affairs. Mm. If they pass it by force, uh, because they have, uh, I mean, we are only 349 in the house, but there are millions of Kenyans out there. If the millions of Kenyans uh, turn against us because of that, then uh, the country becomes ungovern uh, ungovernable. So my, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I hate to imagine what would happen because I can tell you people will not take it lying down. It's, it's difficult for us as it is already. Mm. It's, it's, not, it's not going to be easy. And, the, and when we had demonstrations, we had those people who are unemployed. Now there will be demonstrations and everyone, even those with the suits and ties, will be out there in the streets because it's hurting everyone. So so I would, I would urge the administration to be careful and uh, tone down. And, and the way Ruto saw that uh, the digital you know, uh, content monetization was uh, negative and he said we can wait for this and do it another time, maybe he should also see reason and also stop some of these other things, uh, some, of, some of those laws, and, and wait for another time. But, but, but uh, I, I, will not, I will not go without saying this one. Eh? You know... There's, there's the, the, one of the things I've introduced, and this has been one of the most shocking things, is, uh, is, is the one on 16% uh, VAT on uh, insurance claims. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the principles of insurance is, is indemnity. Mm -hmm. And indemnity means that uh, when, you in, when you insure your vehicle, if it is worth 100000 you will never gain and you will never lose. Mm -hmm. So the value of your car at the point of the accident must be retained as it is. Mm. So you cannot uh, take a car and it is worth 100,000, then insure it for 200,000. If it crashes, they'll pay you 100,000. Mm. That's the value you had at the beginning. Yeah. That's indemnity. Now, how do you tell me that my car is, is worth 100,000, it uh, crashes, then the insurance company pays me 100,000, then you take away 16% 16 16 of, <laughs> of my car. So I, I, my, the accident costs me 16%. Why should the accident cost me and that's why I'm insured? Mm. You know, there's some very, you know, some of these things, 
I, I don't know what was happening where they were when they were making some of these proposals. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Because I saw the president saw one of them and he realized this is a mistake. Maybe these are people on the digital space need to get to him the same way they got to him mm. on their on their matter and show him some of these other, you know. So while we're it, here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just completely <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> 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 I mean, that goes against the principles of insurance. And it's on all yeah. insurance. Imagine. Whether yeah. it's general insurance, medical insurance, yes. health insurance. So you're going to hospital and... <laughs> Imagine, you're already down. Yeah, you're so you're, you're already sick, down. You're you're paid, sick. And then now they take away... So now if you're paid a million, you have to figure out where to get 160,000 to top, top it up. What if because someone, take, someone uh, passes away on their life insurance? So it means the family is going to pay the 60% payout. Percent yep. or death. At, at death. <laughs> yep. So, we have a so death insurance death. payouts, 16% VAT. It's a death tax. I mean, it's... it's, 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 it's <laughs> you die, we tax you. <laughs> <laughs> you get sick, we tax you. We tax you. You. Yeah. you have an accident, we, we tax you. Ah, it's uh, madness. Uh. Moshimua, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Come again soon. Thank you, thank you. It's been a good one. Spice.